amazing to be surrounded by so many like-minded and right-minded people. When I spoke here nearly a year ago, some of the things we were talking about were considered to be conspiracy theories. They were met with laughter and tinfoil hat memes. Oi, lizard! And no one is more gutted than me that these things are coming to pass, but it is what it is. The biggest surprise I've seen is how quick the transition has been from people a year ago saying, they'll never do that, that's mental. You're paranoid, mate, you're a nutter. To now go, I don't see a problem with it, mate. <laughs> the behavioral science has been strong. Everyone here has lost friends or families to COVID. Not to any virus, of course, but to the mental bombardment and psychological manipulation that has left many unable to think logically, critically, or see what is in front of their eyes. Why, right after 18 months, do you trust your television more than your own life experience? Why do you believe that the people that have consistently told you that there are too many people on the planet now suddenly want to save everyone? Why does COVID spread like wildfire in the summer but stop killing people? Why do people only drop dead in China and India? Why do they use a test that is not suitable on any conceivable level and then use multiple cycles above the threshold of that test? Can someone get a ventilator for a poor poor? Why have lockdowns all about saving lives have they driven millions into poverty? Why have they made people commit suicide, alcohol addiction, alcohol related deaths are at an all time high, drug addiction, they've cancelled heart treatments and cancer treatments. They test millions and millions of healthy people every week in this country while refusing to treat millions and millions of unhealthy ones. Why is it about protecting the elderly? Do I need a vaccine certificate to go to a nightclub but I don't need one to go to a bingo hall? Why, if it's about protecting the elderly, do they put do not resuscitate orders on everyone over 60 and many under 60? Why did Matt Hancock procure a two-year supply of midazolam from France, a drug used in palliative care that suppresses the respiratory system that they used within nine months? And Matt Hancock voted to make vaccines mandatory for care home workers to protect the elderly when they spent the last 18 months culling them. And to think people clap these calls. Is the NHS the only organisation that considers the people that pay for it to be a burden? Why is it if I go into a bar or a restaurant or an office block or a school classroom and someone else in there tests positive, then I have to go under health arrest for 10 days. But the guy that sat half a foot away and stuck the swab up his nose doesn't. Doesn't make any sense because it was never about health. It was about control. Why, if the vaccines are the answer, to the point where you need to split society in two and discriminate against those that refuse to have an experimental injection, if they're that good, why does the government expect 70 plus percent of the third wave deaths to be double vaccinated? Why is the health minister, who's had two stabbings, why is he sat in his house now with COVID? Does it work or not, mate? If the certificates are about stopping the spread of the virus, why does the UK government now say that they will recognise people who are in the vaccine trials but given the placebo, they will recognise them as fully vaccinated and they'll be given a certificate so they can go to a restaurant with over 100 people in. At this point, I think they're just trolling. We fought to wake these people from their slumber and we spoke to get, we fought to get this stuff spoke about in the mainstream media for 18 months and it's not happening. We need to stop looking outside of ourselves for assistance. These people are either too far gone, not yet ready to awake, or they're on the payroll. And that's not me being defeated, it's because I'm anything but. But it's important to know the strengths and weaknesses of your own side as much as it is to know the strengths and weaknesses of the people that you're fighting against. The media are not just ignoring the truth, they're actively attacking people that are speaking it. And so is Silicon Valley. Why do I get fact checked for saying that vitamin D boosts your immune system, yet Dr. Shillery, the cornflake packet competition winner doctor, is free to start his shite on TV every day? There's a mild adverse reaction to the vaccine in one and a half a million. What are you lying for? Mate? According to this Gates affiliate, these vaccines have been used successfully in the past. Why are you lying, mate? The biggest mistake the people in this country made was giving the government three weeks. 
three weeks to flatten the curve. And what that did is it told the government that it was theirs to take. And here we are 18 months later. And I said to those people that have complied for 18 months, where's it got you? Because I've not complied once, and yet here I am. socially distanced Ollie Murs concert, but know this. <laughs> that compliance reward depends on your continued compliance. Every booster shot, every bihealy injection, every flu shot, every other flu shot that they make up out of thin air with different variants, you've got to take all of them to keep your freedom reward up to date. It never ends for you, and yet it already ended for me because I never let it start. still functioning by that point. If freedom comes with a caveat, it ain't freedom. No matter how much you tell yourself otherwise. The best vaccine for COVID-19 is the realization that it's all a load of bullshit. over the last 18 months, but we're all still standing. And we're all brothers and sisters and we've refused to be divided. And I know it feels lonely at times, but please remember there's millions of us and we are gonna win this. Yes. We are gonna win this. Technical politicians will suddenly become trustworthy or the BBC will start dealing in facts. We're gonna win this because we have no choice but to win this. And when we realize the strength and power inside every single one of us, we realize that freedom isn't given and freedom isn't taken away. We are freedom. <laughs> and we don't ask the government not to bring in vaccine passports. We tell them we're not having it. And we don't ask them not to lock us down again. We say we're not locking down. And if they insist, we resist. You are warriors, every single one of you, don't forget that. These people are civil servants. And some people in Westminster have forgotten how this dynamic works. They serve us the people, not the reverse. We're in a war, and as I say, every single one of you is a warrior, and it's an honor to stand side by side with every single one of you. psychopaths have had us in their gun sights from the beginning and we have chosen to stand up and say no but now those gun sights have moved to our children and standing up is no longer a choice there's no walking away now in September they come for our kids and after that they'll come for the little ones and we need to stand up and we need to be strong because that is our job as parents with your high school sweetheart or whether your child was conceived in a pub car park it makes no odds your responsibilities from that second are exactly the same that child is your reason for being and you will defend them to your last breath we must be the wall that they shall not pass I will die before I comply with tyranny. And one day it may even come to that. And I will gladly meet my maker and I will look them in the eye as a free man.